Welcome back to another episode of the Filmaholic. This is our top shelf special. We have every Tuesday. Uh, this Tuesday we were talking about top ten summer blockbusters. So these are movies that came out obviously during the summertime, made a lot of money. Um, typically, when I was looking up the definition of a summer blockbuster, it was a movie that made a lot of money, uh, was very popular, and that had big stars. So that's the main things I looked at when I when I looked at summer blockbusters. Obviously, though, there are some there are some films that don't necessarily have big stars. For an example, Star Wars A New Hope. At the time that movie came out, it didn't really have big stars, but that movie made them stars. But that was a blockbuster because it was a phenomenon at the time. You know, like people just came out, something they'd never seen before. Uh, you know, obviously they stood around the block for the movie. That's what the blockbuster came from. Uh, Jaws was the start of the summer blockbuster in 1975, and then Star Wars continued it in 1977. And that's kind of the history of blockbusters, um, which you know always bugs me when I when I there was something I watched one, more recently. It was like uh, said something about a blockbuster, but it was like something that was based like before the '70s, and I'm like, ah, that's they wouldn't use that term back then. Uh, I don't I can't remember what it was, but yeah. But like usual, we always go around and we do our honorable mentions. We do five honorable mentions before we actually give into our top ten. So we're gonna do that. Uh, I'll go first here. Uh, at my number 15 for my honorable mentions, um, I put, uh, and I did a little bit more than you cause I didn't tell you to do this and uh, I was going to, and forgot, uh, but I put the release date, the budget and the total worldwide box office, not domestic, not international, but the worldwide. Uh, so my number 15 on my list is Shrek, um, that came out May 18th, 2001. Uh, and typically I consider the summer movie season to start in May. Um, there is a couple films on here that I have that came out in April, the end of April, but given what they are, I do consider it summer because it carried over into summer. But Shrek, May 18th, 2001. The budget was $60 million, and the total worldwide box office was $487.8 million. Um, I think this is one of the best animated films ever made. Um, that's another top shelf episode that we'll do eventually is is our favorite animated films and Shrek will definitely be on there. This is a five star film for me. I think it's very underrated. Um, this one in particular too, because like I mean I like the second one a lot too, but the you know I, I in my, in the past I thought the second one was my favorite. Rewatching the first one was my favorite. It's so original. This for the the time period that came out, the effects is great. Great cast. Um, you got Eddie Murphy in there, Mike Myers, Cameron Diaz, um, John Lithgow. Um, yeah, just saw that as a kid, loved it. My number 15, my number 14 is Jurassic Park. Originally, uh, came out June 11th, 1993. The budget was 60 million, 63 million dollars, and the total box office was a billion dollars. Um, so it's very much a huge blockbuster. Um, and this is one too where I don't know if you consider this to have like a lot of stars. Um, Jeff Goldblum, yeah, not really. I don't know. Um, but definitely a blockbuster. But definitely a block, yeah, a billion dollars. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's also one of those films where the director, I feel like, I mean, I wasn't alive in 93, so I don't know, but back then I feel like there's a little bit more than there is now. There's a couple directors now that are, like, stars themselves. Like, right now, I, I would say, like, Tarantino and, like, Christopher Nolan are, like, stars in themselves. When they have films come out, that their name alone attracts people to an extent to the movie. And I feel like at the time, probably Spielberg uh, was a name like that as well. Uh, my number 13 is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Uh, my favorite Harry Potter film, five stars. It was also the first Harry Potter film. It was the third one in the series. The first film to come out in the summertime, um, which in, in general, I think that franchise is better for November. But this one was the first one to come out in the summer. It came out June 4th, 2004. The budget was $130 million dollars. And the total worldwide box office was seven hundred ninety-six million dollars. And you know, it's, like I said, it's the third one of the franchise. Franchise. So at that point, everyone knew what Harry Potter was. People were excited. Um, it had been the first two came out a year apart. This one came out. They they put another year in between um, because the cast member had passed away and they had to recast. So there was even more attention upon the film. Um, but that's my number 13. Number 12 is The Dark Knight Rises. Originally uh, came out July 20th, 2012. 
The budget was $250 million, and the total worldwide box office was $1 billion. Um, yeah, I mean, it was the third one. The Christopher, Like I said, Christopher Nolan is the star himself as the Batman. The third and final film in Nolan's trilogy, coming off The Dark Knight, one of the biggest films of all time. Um, and this movie would have made even more if it wasn't for the tragic events that happened opening night of that film. It would be one point something billion, um, which, I mean, it's a little over a billion, but, you know, it, it didn't quite get the, the decimal. It wasn't that much. Um, and my final honorable mention is one that I assume would be in your top ten, but we'll see. And that's Return of the Jedi, uh, which came out May 25th, 1983. The budget was $32.4 million, and the total worldwide box office was $475.3 million. And the third and final film in George Lucas' uh, original Star Wars trilogy. Why do you keep making these guesses about my top ten? We'll see. Uh, all right, my number 15 is what I just added because I had to get rid of Braveheart. He said it wasn't a blockbuster. Uh, it is super bad. Mm. Yeah. That's the one I asked you. You said it qualified, so it's on the list. Came out uh, mid-August. Like I said, $20 million budget. Okay, made... Uh, 170 so you didn't think about that one though did you no because that's not on my list but if i considered that one it probably would be on my list but it's not on my list because i didn't consider it yeah yeah i'm trying to think whether or not i will i do consider it one you said it was i mean based off the budget to what it made and then they become stars they did become stars I'm going with your logic, is what you said. I mean, I guess it would be. You know, list where I was looking at to like, try to get ideas. Some of them had like knocked up and stuff. So I mean, if you consider knocked up to be a blockbuster, I would consider yeah. super bad to be one. Um, so. That's that was my number fifteen, and here's where it gets interesting for you. Number fourteen is Empire Strikes Back. Well, you like Return of the Jedi more, so. Do. Uh, well, that's my number 13, is Return of the Jedi. You son of a bitch. <laughs> um, like you said, those two, the original, like the second and third film made fifth and sixth in the actual Skywalker saga. Um, there's just uh, like, obviously a lot of movies I like more than these. Um, as you can tell, you thought Return of the Jedi was like my number three. Um, yeah, I did. I'm. <laughs> Which blows my mind that you thought it would be that high. I'm just so curious what is in your top ten now. Because, like, there's several in my top ten that I know are not going to be in yours. So. That's what you think. Well, I know there's, like, a solid four now that are not going to be in your top ten. So. <laughs> yeah, that was my 13, 14. Um, number 12, uh, you're going to be excited here. Change your mind. Uh, Predator. Arnold Schwarzenegger, dude. Um, biggest star of all time. Uh, no doubt. 80s. Owned it. You have this at a four star. Uh, which is too low. Too low indeed. Um, and to finish out my honorable mentions is Jurassic Park. Which, like I say, you you had it a little bit lower. Um, yeah, one of my favorite Spielberg movies. Not my favorite, but it's up there. Finishes that my honorable mention. You have Jurassic Park higher than Empire Strikes Back. I like it more. Yeah. Take a film education course, dude. <laughs> I like it more, yeah, for sure. You've got Shrek in your top 15. I don't want to hear about your film education courses. Um... Okay, so then we're going into our actual top 10 here, and I'll go first. Uh, at number 10 for me, I have, you know, uh, Star Wars and New Hope. So the second, I would say the second blockbuster. Um, I don't know if there was any in like 76, but 
if there was, I don't, you know, the biggest movie from 76 that I can think about is Rocky. But, um, yeah, 1977, the original Star Wars just changed the game, changed history of cinema from that point forward uh, with the biggest franchise of all time. Came out May 25th, 1977. The budget was only $11 million, which is insane compared to what the budget of a Star Wars movie is today. And I don't, you know, all the Star Wars movies today come out in December um, that I would consider blockbusters anyways. The only one that came out, um, that's came out in the summertime would be Solo, uh, which I like a lot, but I wouldn't consider it a blockbuster, blockbuster. unfortunately. Um, but yeah. Eleven million dollars, and the total worldwide box office was seven hundred and seventy-five point five million dollars. So, uh, it, it definitely uh, got the studio's attention there. Yeah, um, <laughs> which you know, at the end of the at the end of the trilogy, like I said, Monor will mention, Return of the Jedi had a a budget that was three times that budget, and actually made less money though. It made four hundred seventy-five. Uh, million compared to the 775 million that a new hope made but it was something different that no one had ever seen before but that's that's my number 10 uh well my number 10 is the original blockbuster like you said you son of a bitch <laughs> it's jaws 1975 <laughs> is this on your list Uh, well, Jaws is my number two in this list, and you know that. It's my second yeah. favorite film of all time, which kind of gives away what my number one is, uh, if you know me. But, oh yeah, Jaws is my number two. Uh, the movie came out originally today, uh, June 20th, well, not when this airs, but the day that we filmed <laughs> it, uh, June 20th, 1975. It had a budget of only a $7 million and made a total of 471.2 million dollars so uh just an insane amount of money this movie made compared to what it cost that is that's in, just yeah incredible i mean it's it's incredible with star wars too really but it, you know really if you compare it because it made a it it made more overall but the budget was just a tiny a little bit uh, more yeah. But uh, yeah, that's yeah. one of the best films ever made, in my opinion. I can't believe this is so low on your list. I just like other movies more, man. This isn't the best summer blockbuster. No, no, it's it's your favorite. It's your tops, our top personal ones. But still, I can't well, believe you're you're gonna be excited for the rest of the list. I'm sure that I've already had to talk about my number two. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, and that was your number 10? Yep. <sighs> My number nine is Spider-Man 2. Yeah, yep. didn't make your list. I didn't figure it would. Uh, my number nine is Spider-Man 2. The film originally came out June 30th, 2004. Uh, it had a budget of $200 million, so a huge budget. Uh, but it made a total worldwide box office of $788.9 million. Um, and obviously... Second film of the franchise, very popular. Everyone's talking about that summer. Um, it's it's still regarded as one of the best comic book superhero films of all time. Um, had some had stars in it, but at that point in time, with Tobey Maguire, um, Kirsten Dunst, James Franco, but they had really gotten popular around that time from the last film, Spider Man. Um, you know, Sam Raimi directing it. Just I remember seeing this film in theaters with the train scene and everything. It's just. It's it's definitely one of the definitions of summer blockbuster. It's what you want, and and the fact too that it was so good. It wasn't just like a superhero movie that came out because a lot of movies. There was a lot of superhero movies in the early two thousands. Now we're think we thankfully now we get these summer um, superhero blockbusters that um they're all consistently good. Back then they were majority they're bad. You get uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sam Raimi with his first two were some exceptions. You know, those were surprisingly good. So that's my number nine. 
Well, right, go ahead and get your water so we can talk some. Um, my number nine is Inglorious Bastards. Inglorious Bastards is my number four. No, knocking them off one at a time. Yeah. Which wasn't uh, on my list until you mentioned it was a summer blockbuster. Uh, it's, you know, it's one of the ones that uh, I didn't really consider a summer blockbuster when I was thinking about it. But then when I was looking at the list of, that other people had made of like the best summer blockbusters, um, it was on there. And I was like, well, I guess it is, if you can think about it, because it has, it made a good amount of money. So the movie originally came out August 21st, 2009. So it clocked, it's in summer. Um, it had a budget of $70 million, and it made a total worldwide box office of $321 million, which is the lowest total box office that I have of any movie on my list. But it's still a good amount. And you also look at it in terms of does it have stars in it, and it absolutely does with Brad Pitt leading the film as Lieutenant Outer Rain. And then you also look at the fact that Tarantino himself is a star directing the film. Um, so, I mean, Inglourious Bastards is an incredible film one of my favorites uh, it's number four for me yeah number nine uh i don't know for some reason i was thinking like this movie came out like november for some reason it had like that kind of feel to it no i think that he has only had uh well i don't i don't know for sure because i don't I, obviously like i wasn't paying attention back then i'm not sure if his earlier movies but i want to say i know once upon a time and and Glorious Bastards are like the two that I can think of that he had that came out in the summertime. I'm not sure if his... Oh, Pulp Fiction came out in October. Oh, yeah, okay. That's right. I can't imagine... Django came out in December. Yeah. Uh, Hate Wait came out in December. I can't imagine Jackie Brown coming out in the summer. That seems like a... Either early in the year or late in the year. It doesn't seem like a middle one like that. Yeah, I'm yeah. just thinking about like maybe uh, Kill Bill or um, The Death Proof. Uh, so yep. Jackie Brown came out in December. Yeah. It actually came out on Christmas Day. Death Proof came out um, in May. So it would it it would have been. Well, I mean, I don't. It wasn't a blockbuster though, but it it did come out in the summertime. Not a blockbuster. And Kill Bill came out. One of them came out. This volume two came out in April, so I'm assuming that volume one would have came out probably April the f year before. Let's see here, real quick. Uh, it came out in October the year before. Strange, but yeah. Neither one of those would be summer blockbusters either. Reservoir Dogs, I can't imagine being a blockbuster. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know. For some reason, I thought this was later in the year. Uh, so that's why I didn't even consider it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was, dude. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> Apparently on both of our lists. Uh, so uh, you want me to go next? Yeah, keep going, dude. Let's see okay. which... Uh, already, I know... Well, my next two are definitely... Thinking of yours, like, I know a few... Um, some of them might surprise me. Okay. Uh, my number eight is Avengers Infinity War. That's my number three. <laughs> uh, Avengers Infinity War came out April 27th, 2018. Uh, that's what I'm saying where it's like a situation where if it was any other film, this would be before my cutoff cause, or my, my start because my, my start would be May 1st. But they were pushed back a week too. Technically. Right. Yeah, because they originally, I think, were supposed to come out like the first week in May. Um, but these are these. You can't look at this and be like, "Oh, this isn't the start of the summer movie season." It <laughs> absolutely is the kickoff of the summer movie season, uh, and these movies carried over into the summer. I mean, when I worked at the theater, you had Endgame was still playing when we had Far From Home come out, you know? Like, yeah. people were still going to see these films. Well, they so, had re-released it the week before, I think. Uh, yeah, I think they did. I think they re-released it. But um, still, even the year before, with, with Infinity War and, and Ant-Man and the Wasp. Um, but yeah, Infinity War made a, had a budget of $321 million. 
but it had a box office of two billion dollars. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> huge amount. Um, yeah, my twelfth favorite movie. Really? Yes. Um, I know that on the channel here we've done our top ten. Me and Abel did our top ten favorite films uh, around when I started the channel. So, and probably I don't I don't think it'll be this year, but probably next year we'll do a top t- another top shelf episode um, of our favorite films. But because you know it, it fluctuates, it changes, um, and I want to do that again. But next time to make it more interesting, I'll probably do like we'll probably do like a top twenty favorite films. Mm. Which I don't know in terms of that. Do we want to do top twenty and then five honorable mentions, so we have a total of twenty five? I don't. <laughs> or do we want to top fifteen? Be hard enough. Really, you think so? Yeah. Just what you want to actually put in there? Yeah, that's that's a. Uh... Well, I guess it would be easier now with Letterbox because I can literally just go for my five star films and like rank them. Right. But then it's like if I haven't seen them, it's like, ah, is this a five star film? <laughs> Like that's, that's the question, because, like, I mean, I don't know. That's tough to say. But most likely, if you haven't seen it in a while, in that long that you don't know whether or not it should be a five-star film, it probably shouldn't be in your top 20 film or film, favorite films. Yeah, probably not. But at least not at this point. Hopefully, but I don't know. Uh, do you want to say the next one, or you going to keep going? I'll go with my number eight. Okay. Uh, I got Terminator 2. Yeah, I hope not on my list. Man, savage, dude. Uh, not a five-star film, so they didn't make it. I don't know what's wrong with you. Um, second favorite Arnold movie of all time. Um, easily James Cameron's best movie. Uh, ah, you're mistaken. <laughs> Um, but like I said, it came out. I think it was July third. It came out. Um, yeah, yeah. I think it came out July third, um, ninety one. But ah, man, it's like it's obviously an action movie, but it's got some drama mixed in there. Um, I know you love the the acting. From John Connor. Sucks, dude. Brought, brings it down from a 5 to a 4.5. <laughs> yeah. Um, don't... I mean, I don't think... If I if I made this list even... A few years later, I don't know if this would move, move up. Based on what I have above it. Um, which one of the ones above it, you'll, you'll be questionable. But... I stand by it. Yeah, well, uh, just to let you know, James Cameron's best movie came out in December. So. No, it came out in July. December. I told you. Uh, okay. Uh, my number seven, I hope you're ready for this. It could. It's going, probably either going to be your two or three, or two, one or two, now that I've... I guess it's your number two. Uh, that's Avengers Endgame. That's my number, number, that's my number, number. two. Uh, yeah, Avengers Endgame, the biggest money-making film of all time, is my number seven. Uh, originally came out April 26, 2019. It had a total budget of $356 million, um, which is you know the highest budget on this list. <laughs> probably probably the highest budget of all time. I think it might be. Um, and it had a but it had a total worldwide box office of 2.8 billion dollars yeah. you know, the most <laughs> of all time so, so that uh, two-part movie really 700 million dollar budget but five billion in profits yeah <laughs> god so, that's just think, that's not toys that's not yeah oh, man. clothing posters yeah any kind of merchandise digital physical media sales after that yeah, because I got steel books, so they got me. Uh, yeah. I mean, I have the spe- other edition from. Uh, I have the Target edition 
I don't the, know. The book and everything. It's not a still book, dude. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a still book. That's what I know. Uh, uh, but this yeah. is definitely the modern day biggest. I mean, this is the biggest blockbuster of all time. Still, uh, it's not the mother, but it's the biggest blockbuster of all time. Yeah, definitely the modern day like Star Wars. Yeah. Lining up. Well, I mean, not lining up because you have reserve seating, but just remember trying to get my ticket. Oh, I was like, oh, I swear if I don't get the first seating, I lose my mind. Uh, well, you know, it wasn't that hard, though, where it was a situation where the hardest time that I've ever had to get tickets, I remember, and being the, the most scared to get tickets was Force Awakens. Yeah, I had to get the 10 o'clock show. Like, shit crashed with Force Awakens. Like... But um, I was able to get on there and buy my tickets online to get Force Awakens um, when I got saw those. So that was cool. Um, Rogue One wasn't as bad, but I was still scared about it. And then Last Jedi, we showed up. We knew the exact time we showed up at the theater. Yeah. <laughs> oh, person that, person I, working at the theater, I could figure out the I exact don't think time. Oh yeah, like, oh yeah, they are. They are. I checked <laughs> earlier today. <laughs> Give me the tickets. <laughs> Um, but then, you know, like with, um, and I, obviously I did the same thing with Rise of Skywalker, but that was a disappointment. Um, that's not on your list. You just, that's not a summer you, blockbuster. Even though it came out, you were like, yeah, I'm going to say this. I'm going to include it anyways. <laughs> um, but with Endgame, actually, when I got the tickets for that, it was a situation where I was working in the theater and I didn't have my availability set any certain way in terms of like daytime so like i wasn't sure if i was gonna have the day off so i had i didn't get my tickets when everybody else did for the first time i didn't pre-order the tickets um but it was a situation where it's like as soon as i found out i wasn't working that thursday night i was like what seats are available yeah <laughs> and my manager at the time like looked at the seating on like one of the show the seven o'clock show and he was like hey man there's these two handicap seats go ahead and get them like you have my permissions just get them cool. <laughs> i'm like all right man I got mine as soon as they dropped. Wasn't I just repeated that word. <clears throat> Wasn't messing around. Um, no, get my tickets. Went into it without seeing the trailer. That was the task by itself. That seems very odd. I don't know if you were telling the truth about that. Yeah. I never watched it. And then the only time I even came close was when I went to see Aquaman. And that was like the first trailer. I was like, nope. I walked out. Like went to the bathroom. Like, I'll be back. <laughs> no, nah, I don't want to say I don't want to see it. Uh go in fresh. I don't even think that first trailer showed that much, to be honest. I well, I don't know. <laughs> but oh I think I, it's you had, you had told me, like, oh, it's not that much. Like, no, nah, no, nah, you're not getting me. I'm trying to think of what it showed other than the title. The first trailer I know, I think the official trailer was like mostly Tony. Um, and his speech to Pepper at the very beginning. When he's talking to the, the mask. Yeah, I think that's... I remember that being in the in the thing, and there's a shot of Captain America. Yeah. He's like, I, what is it, whatever it takes? Well, yeah, they did their speech or whatever, you know. Whatever. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to see any of it. Um, nope. Not getting me, dude. <laughs> I think that's like the only movie I've ever done that with. And I was like, I just want to go in fresh. And it was. So you were going to do it with Rise of Skywalker. I was going to. Um, and then yeah. you're like, fuck this movie. <laughs> I wish I would have. <laughs> no, just... Not at all. But yeah, my number two. You may go or you want to go next? Uh, how many you got? You've only said my one and my only. You only said my two and three. And then I've said eight, nine, and ten. So I don't know how many you have. Yeah. I have my six, my five, my three, and my one. Yeah, I'll go there. Because um, this is the questionable one you'll have anyway. With number seven is Last Action Hero. <sighs> yes. <laughs> Tired of Schwarzenegger. <laughs> uh, number seven. Uh, the only reason you'll have it questionable is because of what it made. What did it, it make? Like slightly under doubled its money worldwide, but it did come out in June and it had Schwarzenegger. 
So mm -hmm. I'll consider it a blockbuster because of the time. Because this was kind of his last like big movie besides True Lies. Okay. After this, it's like downhill for a while. <laughs> it's, it's, it's downhill. Like, uh, you know, he became governor and whatever. But True Lies. That was a decade later, though. Damn. It's really, it's downhill. Um, well, I say this was 93. And like I yeah. say, I think it was 94. Um, I mean, after this, you had some like enjoyable movies to me, but it's nothing like huge. People like Eraser, like, nobody's nobody's like getting tickets like oh, i gotta see this chill uh yeah no one you know they're like nah we we gave up after val kilmer put that in there that was a blockbuster i'm sure a five star film <laughs> it's a three star or two star i think it's a two it's a two star but i was like uh i could watch it um but i kept last action hero just because he has got the arnold factor and it came out in summer even though people misunderstood it i don't know what they were expecting uh incredible movie <laughs> my number six is spider-man obviously yeah i was waiting on it yeah uh you know when i put spider-man 2 in there you knew spider-man was coming uh my second favorite comic book movie of all time so you know the other one's coming too of uh, what my favorite comic book movie is um it originally came out may 3rd 2002 the budget was $139 million, but it had a total worldwide box office of $825 million. So while it still had a, a, a pretty big budget, it, it made a, a shit ton of money there. Um, because, I mean, it, it's Spider-Man, probably the most well-known superhero, um, in terms, at least in terms of Marvel. Uh, yeah. pro I would say the, the three most, in general, Batman, Batman Superman, Superman, and Spider-Man. The, the three yeah. most um and you know we had had dc had already did their thing with batman and superman and kind of you know at this point those are fizzled out people don't really don't have that much interest because of like the last films and those series uh marvel you know coming here with sam raimi taking over spider-man just visually i'm sure like people were like blown away by the trailer seeing that like him just swinging laying on the building like oh my god <laughs> um yeah yeah, uh, got a, had a had solid cast. I don't really know. I mean, obviously, at the time, I don't think these people were, were big names, maybe. I'm sure people knew Willem Dafoe, and um, Tobey Maguire had had some things before this. I mean, obviously, Pleasantville and stuff. So he was probably, I would assume, on the same level as, like, a Timothy Chalamet today in terms of back then. Oh, like, um, she had done an interview with a vampire. What's her big one? Yeah, Jumanji. So like people knew her too. Uh, Franco, yeah. I know how he got the role. Um, well, Franco actually auditioned for Peter Parker, he got the role. Uh, yeah. and and did not get it. And then they brought him back in for Harry, thankfully. Um, but you know he he had had in terms of big things at that point only Freaks and Geeks, uh, which was like a more of a cult thing. People liked it, but it only had one season, didn't make it. Um, and it then just, I think. Yeah. I think it came out the same that his James Franco film came out. I, I think the same year as Spider Man, but I think Sam Raimi had seen it bef already and like was like, "Hey, you know, this guy's got talent." And I saw his audition for Peter. Let's put him in the film. Um, and it was the first comic book superhero film that I saw in theaters too, so it has a special place for me in terms of that. Um, but I made it number six on my list. Uh, my number six, uh, you just watched recently for the first time. Oh, yeah? Uh, yes. Um, Poor Skump. <sighs> I didn't even realize that was a blockbuster. Summer blockbuster. It made, uh, I looked up, $670 million worldwide. Huge movie. Um, so you can put it on your list when you redo it. It still wouldn't be on my list. But... <laughs> it's a good movie. Really good. Four stars. It's a pop star. Um, Four star. I don't know what your problem. Like you see, I used to hate this movie. I hate it. It's terrible. Didn't even watch it. Um, one of my favorite movies, uh, obviously. Number six on the list. <laughs> this will be you have this above Empire Strikes Back. Hi. Yeah, right my point. This is a favorite list, sir. Um, this would be in my top 20 all time, probably. Um, 
Tom Hanks acting incredible, best acting of his career. Um, well, but, you haven't seen Greyhound yet, so you just wait. I I got to get that Apple TV subscription. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> uh, that's a video by itself, like what you saw in that trailer. Um, yeah, best acting all time. I'm glad I won Best Picture. I think. I, I don't know. It's, it's hard to decide between that and Pulp Fiction because they're vastly different movies. Um, but yeah, number six. Give it to the Lion King before I give it to... Before I sure, it's safe. <laughs> You're crazy. They're not going that far. Um, <laughs> I don't know what your problem is there, man. Um, <laughs> this video is over. <laughs> that was yeah. your number six? That was my number six, yes. Okay, well... I hope you're ready to talk. Um, my number five is The Dark Knight. That's my number five. So really? Ready to talk anyway, so suck it, loser. <laughs> you thought you were going to steal a list? <laughs> I, wait, till I my, did. wait till my next pick. Uh, <laughs> my number five. Uh, yeah, my number five is The Dark Knight. Um, best comic book film of all time. Uh, great film going experience for me, and that's the next list we'll be talking about. Uh, next week we're doing top ten movie going experiences, so I'm excited to talk about that. Um, what was that face for? I had to make that list. It was yeah. really difficult. Um, <laughs> just the out. last ten. That's all. <laughs> What'd you say? Just the last ten movies I watched on theaters. Like, oh, just... <laughs> this was a good experience. <laughs> <laughs> Um, July 18th, 2008, the budget was $185 million, and the total worldwide box office was uh, $1 billion. So, it, you know, I mean, it was a great film. It was definitely a summer blockbuster. It had the Nolan name, but this is really what created the Nolan name. So, that wasn't a big factor. Um, it was mainly that it was Batman. It looked amazing. Heath Ledger was playing this new version of the Joker. We hadn't got a Joker since... 89 with Nicholson. Now we got Heath Ledger doing this something that's completely different and looks fantastic. And he also just passed away. So that brought so much more curiosity to the film. Um, yeah, it, it's a fan, fantastic film. Five stars. Yeah. One of my favorite performances and characters from the 2000s. Um, Nolan's best film, obviously. Yeah. This or uh, Interstellar, I know you think. What'd you say? You think this or Interstellar? No, right. I don't. Um, not even <laughs> right, close. right there together. Um, but yeah, same number five. I mean, you got. Uh, well, we already said my number four, which was Inglorious Bastards. Um, and you also already said my number two, which was Jaws. So I got my number one and my number three. I got my number one and my number four. Is my number, is your number four my number one? Yeah. <laughs> one well, I'll go ahead and Hollywood. <sighs> well, never. Fuck me, I guess. Um, yeah. Oh, my, <laughs> you want to wait? <laughs> my number one favorite uh, summer blockbuster of all time is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um, this was a film that originally I wasn't even going to put on the list, even though it's my favorite film of all time. I didn't, I didn't consider it a summer blockbuster until you like persuaded me on the fact that it was a block, a summer blockbuster. And then I started looking at the definition. It was like, what was the budget? What did it make? Did it have stars? And it absolutely has stars. It's got Brad Pitt, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Margot Robbie leading the film. Yep. It's directed by Quentin Tarantino, who is, I would argue, the biggest name director right now. Um, and it's about Hollywood. It's... The trailers were awesome. It's his second biggest film, money-wise. It had a budget... Uh, well, it came out on July 26, 2019. had a budget of $90 million, and it made a total box office of $374.3 million. So, a good amount. Um, Four times. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I, you know, I've talked about this movie in a, in a lot of videos, so I'm not going to go too much into it, but it is my favorite film. Yeah. That was my number four. It. What you got? Your number three? I have my number three yet. How many? What, what do you have left? I got my number one. 
Okay. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and do say my number three. My number three, you've already talked about, and it was in your honorable mentions, and that's The Empire Strikes Back. Um, as of right now, it's my favorite Star Wars film. It used to be my number two. I think it's my favorite now. Um, Man, you really just hated the Rise of Skywalker. I hated Rise of Skywalker, and it really, yeah. I feel ruined the entire experience for me. <laughs> Force Awakens is still my top ten favorite films, but yeah, it, it's really that, moved down, dude. Yeah. After After Rise of Skywalker, it's like I can't like not think about that now. That's the ending of that. Until you make the top twenty, it's like it's it's not there anymore. It's right, it's gone. gone. It's not even a mention. <laughs> Yeah, go. I just move it down to four point five. I start thinking about anything. He's getting pissed off, like, "Ah, oh, you son of a bitch." <laughs> this is what you get. Um, but Empire, you know, I think the best movie sequel of all time. Um, what's that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I do. Um, I thought you were going to say the best Star Wars movie, and I was like, oh, yeah, and I was like, oh, no, hold on, he's going somewhere else with this. You know, it's the, best movie. <laughs> it's the best movie sequel of all time. Uh, it came out May 21st, 1980, had a budget of only $18 million, but a total worldwide box office of $547.9 million, which really, these numbers are surprising. I mean, that's a huge amount of, of money, um, you know, especially compared to the budget, but... The fact that A New Hope, and like I said, like I know it was a game changer, but it had made the most out of that original trilogy, is is really surprising to me. Well, it's like a huge drop, it seems. It's like, what, $200 million drop in profits? I mean, uh, not, that you, not yeah. that you spent that much more money. Um, but... Yeah. I'm sure they were expecting maybe a little bit more. You had about a... a Two hundred million drop worldwide. I mean, like I, I'm sure domestically, it was probably it probably went up every time domestically. I don't know if for sure because I don't I didn't write those numbers down, but that's probably my prediction is they probably went up and they went down worldwide at each time because Maybe. we know we know I know paying attention to the Star Wars films that come out now with like the new trilogy with Force Awakens and and whatnot, um, they don't do as well overseas than they do as here. People in America like love Star Wars more than people in, say, China. I don't know what the situation is, um, but that's just how it goes. They have better taste. Uh, um, because, you know, what was it? I think worldwide, like Endgame is the biggest money-making movie of all time. But domestically, Force Awakens still is. Yeah. Um, so that's something to think about when you're looking at these numbers. But that's the last one on my list. We've, we've said all my... Uh, my number two is Jaws. My number one is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. What's your number one, dude? <clears throat> you don't know? No, I don't know. No, you don't know? Uh, Mad Max Fury Road. Oh, <laughs> A movie you have yet to watch um, for some reason. I don't know. You will one day. And it'll be the Forrest Gump thing, except it'll be five stars. Um, this was a movie, the first time I watched the original trailer for this, I thought it looked awful. I was like, nope, not for me. <laughs> not for me, dude. I was like, this looks terrible. Uh, I don't know. For some reason, the second trailer had dropped, and I was like, oh, man. You got me. Game changer. I don't know. I can't imagine anything different being in it. Yeah. But watch this. Uh, California, when I went on the trip. Incredible. That'll be on my movie. That, was probably, that might be my number one. I figured it would be. Sure. It'll be up there. Because um, I love like two-story theater, too. And that's what it was. Two stories. Went upstairs to watch it. Huge movie. Uh, in my top ten of all time um you'll watch this one time you'll watch it next time i come up that's what we'll, we'll do i won't bring john wick 2 i'll bring my max fury road mm -hmm. just in the john wick case that way you think it's hey, what a <laughs> disappointment um i mean i do need re to, to watch re it because i did you need to watch it 
Let's get watch your direction. the first three Mad Max films more recently. Um, the first one, I really like Mad Max. Um, I was not a fan of two and three. I didn't even know you watched three. I did. <laughs> That's usually most people's reaction. But yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that I remember that much about it. So that's Tina Turner. Other than being disappointed. <laughs> um, what do I have? I have Thunderdome at two stars. Yeah, I don't think I have it rated. Yeah, you don't. Um, and I have Mad Max 2 at two and a half, so. That's savage right there. <clears throat> that is beyond savage. Um, <laughs> I have it at a five, I think, but it's probably a four and a half. Um. Mad, the original Mad Max is probably a four star for me. I think I have it at four stars. But Fury Road, five star. It's a movie that impresses me more and more every time I watch it. Like I turn it up, like TV all the way to a hundred. Like yeah, I know. Don't care <laughs> who who's complaining. I just wake up in the morning. <gasps> what the fuck? <laughs> I, I just don't care, dude. It's it's a lovely, it's, lovely day. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm trying to sleep at seven o'clock in the morning. Um. It's a movie you have to turn up all the way. It deserves the attention and the respect. You gotta stay awake. <laughs> I just fucking fell asleep. You watch your mouth. <laughs> Disrespect. <laughs> um, I, guess that, I guess that was the problem. I didn't turn the volume up all the way. Yeah, that was it. Plus, you would just get off work and ate like a huge burrito. That I might... don't know what you're talking about. No, yeah, I think I told you it was a burrito. Yeah, you said Chipotle. Um, it could have been us. We have discussed my memory. Um, <laughs> yeah, cinematography. Don't even know if I changed out my work clothes, dude. This is like, <laughs> I'm out, dude. I just put a blanket on too. Like, I, I can stay awake <laughs> for sure. <laughs> just lay down on the couch. Uh, yeah, I got this. Yeah. I woke up like 15 minutes left, and I, oh, this movie sucks. I missed like an, two hours, and it's still the same thing happening. It's He's incredible. Still in this chase. It's t- still getting followed. I don't understand. You probably thought you just fell asleep for like 30 seconds. I did. And then Maybe. I was like, oh, and then it was over, and I was like, oh, this is the shortest <laughs> film ever made. <laughs> this movie should have won Best Picture, uh, Best Director, Robbed for both. Um, yeah, this will be definitely my top ten movie going experiences. But it is my number one for the summer blockbuster. It made that. It made a lot of money. Mm. Let's see. I don't. Well, it got re-released, um, but I don't think that factors in. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I I just look at the IMDb. It well, made $375 million. Um, I don't know, what, I don't know what the budget was, though. Yeah. It had a uh, $150 million budget. Yeah. It's a little over double. But, like you said, huge stars, though. And like I say, it had a big push. Uh, had a domestic opening of $45.4 uh, million. Yeah. So... Oh, that, that was the opening weekend. Sorry, that was the opening weekend. Forty-five million, and then overall domestic, it made one hundred and fifty-four uh, million. Yeah. So. I definitely think it's one like if it got re- if it was like released today, it'd be a huge spike in the numbers. You think? For like a re-release, yeah, I think people would. I know I would go see it again. If it got released. Well, you know, they might release it a double feature with whatever he makes next, whether it be the Furiosa prequel. I would hope if they did that, you would have the prequel and then this one. Um, I don't think they'd do that. Probably not. But well, I say, unless you have, like, you know, I know drive ins might do it, something like that. Yeah. But, yeah, that's my number one. Maybe New Beverly will show it sometime. God, get my ticket. <laughs> get my ticket, dude. I wanted to go see it. It didn't play around here. Was the black and white version? 
because that's what he originally wanted to shoot it in. Which is really strange because your other three Mad Max movies are not black and white. Not Why would you make this one in black and white? But, you know, I'll watch it, but it never came out. And, and that's one of the things that, you know, like, I don't love this movie, but that's one of the things that stand out and I appreciate about it is the, the use of color in it. The yeah. cinematography. So I'm like, why would you want it black and white? Why would you take that away from the film? Which, I mean, you know, this is more colorful than even, like, Logan, but that's another thing about Logan. It was like, they released that black and white version, and I have it, but I'm like... I watched I, it once in black and white. I just don't care. It was okay. Well, it's just like a different thing. Like, if you don't shoot it in black and white, it looks weird when you watch it in black and white. Yeah? Yeah, I don't know. It's... I don't know if it's because I've already seen it in color, but... Yeah, Logan looked weird to me. I don't know. It's, I don't know what what people find that to be like a better thing about a film to make it black and white. I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind if older films, but I mean, I would never make a new film and be like, yeah, I want to put it in black and white because I like that more. What? Thanks for be black and white. Well, it, was, it could probably still be better than Rise of Skywalker, so. <laughs> You should watch that black one. I see if your opinion goes up. Maybe. Can't see everything. Like I don't know what's happening. Ah, uh, what's <laughs> is that? Palpatine? No, dead speak. Yeah. yeah. Top ten most disappointing films of all time. <laughs> that's another list we'll do eventually. Yeah. All right, guys, that's our episode of Top Shelf this week. Like I said, next week we're doing uh, top 10 movie-going experiences, so don't forget to check back for that. And like this video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you guys next week.